I mean, come on. Can you handle the excitement? Can you handle the pressure of making a lot of money? I thought you could probably handle it. Let's get dive right in here and see what we got. Well, of course, this is the high point of the whole presentation. So we might as well just stay here for the next hour, two hours, something like that, whatever. Anyway, all right, let's take a look at this. Big explosion on Friday after the double shuffle that we had on Wednesday. Wednesday got people freaking out, but by Friday, new highs. Look at the purple predictor. The key here is, is that it's caught up with the S&P 500 and is now leading higher. So it looks to me like we're on a new leg to high prices. Now, the Dow Jones, similar situation, but it's been the leader of the three big indices with the NASDAQ has been the, the one that was behind. All of last week, we saw Apple dragging down the NASDAQ. Even though the purple predictor was very bullish, Apple was suffering, suffering, suffering. And then on Friday, whammo. We saw uh, huge technology names like Alphabet, Apple, Amazon blow out earnings results, and that caused the NASDAQ to completely explode to the upside there. It's now the leader of the three. Now, we need to see some follow through. Let's be serious, okay? Just one day does not make a trend. But nonetheless, it shows that it looks like the big tech names are back in action. Now, the seasonality is bullish. We're starting to set in a low that we can start to put in some type of a stop loss, mental stop loss. But right now, our seasonality indicator, which is the Russell 2000, is extremely bullish. Seasonality, well, what can I say? We've gone over this before. We are going to see higher prices. Come on, let's go. And remember, because the seasonality is bullish, I'm putting on double size positions in the midst of a major bull market. We are crushing the market. We are making double money right now. Pay attention. Okay, as you can see, the yield curve is looking very, very good and is about to be kind of a positive factor for the first time. You know, it's been a little bit positive, but as you can see, it's going to be like racking up a shotgun here. It's going to get people's attention and we're going to see the market skyrocket. Now, asset allocation also showing massive amounts of money flowing into the stock market and out of the bond market. So when people say, well, how could it keep going higher? How could this market keep going higher year after year? Well, they're taking money from other places and putting it into the stock market. Our risk decator, eh, not, this is not a, a real bullish thing here. It's kind of stabilized and is kind of wiggly wiggly here. Uh, but still, it's good, but it would be nicer if it was moving up like all the other bullish indicators. Now, global shares, boring. Why would we want to be over there? That is truly boring. Now, bonds, uh, have really gotten much weaker than I expected. So the money's flowing out of them dramatically, as we just saw a minute ago. I, one of the reasons why I didn't get so bearish on bonds was because the purple predictor has been quite bullish. And as you can see, it's still very bullish. So I can't see a big bear market here in the bonds, but maybe we dribble a little bit lower. Why? Well, because our indicators are kind of a mixed bag. The key one that we've really been focusing on is the blue line. That's the 10-year treasury yield in Germany. And as you can see, it's actually going down, which would suggest lower bond yields. This is a chart of yields. Gold going down. That's also suggesting lower bond yields. Only the CRB, which is the chart down at the bottom, is going up, which would suggest higher yields. So generally speaking, our, our bond factors are actually bullish for bonds, and yet they're still going down. So kind of a mixed picture. I'm not trading the bond market right now. Now, the dollar had this incredible breakout. I highlighted this for you last week. You've got to be paying attention to what I'm telling you. Uncle Courtney is showing you the right place to make the big money. So last week, I showed you this big head and shoulders bottom. We made the head and shoulders bottom. We broke out on the dollar. I've put over there on the right-hand side of the chart, you can see that that shows you that we should be getting up over 97 according to the chart objective from the head and shoulders bottom. That's a pretty significant rally, 2 3% in the dollar. That's a pretty big rally. And notice that it retraces a huge amount of the big bear market that we had in the dollar. So right now, you want to be long the dollar. 
Now I talked, uh, if you're long the dollar, that means you got to be short gold. And look how gold got right down to the lows we made before. So my bullish attitude, I've got to take it away because I think that the dollar is going to be moving higher, interest rates moving higher. These are all things that are going to weigh on the gold market. Now, fully paid up members, of course, you know, I've got additional analysis here on the gold market in the fully paid up section. So hang in there. We'll put a little bit of a nuance on it. And uh, you can see here, look at what happened. The top panel, pretty much neutral for gold. The middle panel, pretty much neutral for gold. But look down at the bottom. That's the yen. It collapsed. That's why gold is going down. That's your reason right there. Oil, I talked last time about how I felt I was getting more bullish on the oil market. We're grinding higher. We popped up on Friday, but I just, there's just so much overhang. I don't think we can have a major bull market here. All right, freebies, you know the picture. Love having you here, uh, but you really ought to be one of the cool kids. So uh, fully paid up members, hang in there for just a minute.